After a huge outpouring of emails and phone calls, your town is back. My name is Stanley Mickelson, your select board member of the town of Dartmouth, and my guest and good friend is Dartmouth's Director of Public Works, Mr. David Hickox. Welcome. My pleasure to be here. My pleasure to have you, my friend. Um, so I think we instead of talk about it the last time because you were my first guest and I really appreciate it. But I think we should just get into the nitty gritty while we, <clears throat> while we have the time. Hopefully we have enough time to talk about the things that you and I think will be <clears throat> excuse me, important to the town of Dartmouth. So, um, so what, do you, what do you think? I'd like to, if you don't mind, I'd like to go over the needs of the town through uh, the, the rest of 2017, 18, and further. And hopefully we have enough time to talk about all these projects well, that we have. Uh, we have all either, day. Yes, we probably, we'll probably we could need probably it. talk all day. But okay. we'll, we'll do some, we'll talk about all the highlights. Sure. So I'll give you the microphone. All right. So um, obviously transportation is a, a, big, um, a big part of what we do. And, and um, as you can see, driving around town, um, we have a lot going on. Probably the most visible of all our projects is up on the uh, Fonz Connor Corridor, where we are um, and have been working for years on remediation of uh, uh, congestion. And so it goes back to a study that was done by Serpent many years ago, where we evaluate where they evaluated Fonz Connor Road, made certain recommendations. We took those recommendations. We broke them into four <coughs> phases. The first phase is essentially complete, which is the interchange. Fonz Connor 195. Um, we're really pleased with the progress that Lynch uh, made on that project and uh, we're pleased with the outcome. That was the core to um, mitigating congestion up on Fonz Connor Road. The second phase is underway, which is the work you see currently on uh, Fonz Connor Road from State Road up to Cross Road. And um, that phase will um, do two things. Uh, one, it's going to add an additional northbound lane from uh, Route 6 up to Cross Road. Uh, if you were to drive up there today, you'll see them working in the median strip. They're narrowing that median strip, and that's how we pick up the width for the additional right. Uh, right. northbound lane. Um, the project ties right into the interchange. As you know now, northbound coming out of Cross Road, you have four lanes. The new Fonz Corner Road will tie right into those right. lanes. Um, the other becomes thing, a diff sorry, but comes a little difficult maneuvering that some mornings and some afternoon. I, I, go, I, I use that every morning uh, for, from from the Fonz Corner Club to to my office, and uh, I notice it becomes difficult for some yeah. people to maneuver that that change in lanes because exactly. it's, it's, it's a, a little crossover, awkward and little crossover and exactly. becomes difficult. But yeah, uh, um, the other thing that's uh, uh, at the other important part of that project is we're upgrading the, the three intersections, Fonz Corner and Route 6, uh, Fonz Corner at the mall, and then Fonz Corner at Lowe's. And um, um, in addition to upgrading the intersection, the, the final component is we're uh, installing what they call adaptive signal control. Um, all the signals from State Road all the way up to the interchange will communicate with each other. They'll make real-time adjustments based on the traffic flow and that'll allow traffic, for instance, in the morning to get into UMass Dartmouth more efficiently and mm -hmm. in the afternoon to move out, special events. Um, it's one of the first ad adaptive signal control systems in Massachusetts, so we're really uh, excited about that. So the, the, this new system will be from Fonz Corner to the interchange, correct? Right, State yeah. Road, right. right up to the interchange. Right. Um, and again, one of the first uh, uses of adaptive signal control in Massachusetts, so we're really excited about that. That's great. Yeah. Um, the next phase of the Fonz Connor congestion study would be the uh, much talked about Tucker Road relocation project, essentially rerouting Tucker Road through the library, uh, through the commercial uh, building out on State Road where Metro Pizza is located, to create a four way intersection at Hathaway Road. That project is at 25% design. Uh, there's been quite a bit of discussion between the town and the state as to who will be responsible for land takings and business relocation. Mm -hmm. So as a result of those um, discussions, the project has slowed somewhat. Mm -hmm. uh, the final phase of the congestion study would be uh, Fonz Corner Road north of the railroad tracks 
up to Old Fall River Road and including the intersection of Old Fall River Road. Um, and that work is, uh, we had initially planned to start that work this fall and we pushed back on that a little bit because of the delays on Tucker Road mm. being the third phase. Yeah. So that's the most visible project that you see. Um, one of the other more controversial projects, obviously, for the folks down in the south end of town has been the Peyton Arum Causeway. Uh, we started that project last July. We're extremely pleased with the progress. The select board yourself visited the site last night. Um, and uh, the project's moving well. I must say, um, to, to so this is our second visit. So we, we visited pretty much early on uh, before almost... Uh, I think they were working on Smithneck at that point where they uh, uncovered all the issues that, uh, that were not planned on. Uh, so this is our next, this is our second, site, uh, our second visit to the site. And I must say I'm overwhelmed, personally overwhelmed yeah. by, by the progress and, and, and the, uh, uh, just the, just the absolute aesthetics of this, this, new, this new causeway. Yeah. Um, it's lovely uh, from what I've seen. Smithneck is done. Um, the railings are up, the sidewalk's in. It's just wonderful. I encourage yeah. people to go out and yeah. just take a peek at what, yeah. what we've accomplished so far. Yeah. And Rocio, isn't it, uh, the contractor? They are. Um, they've done, a, and the state and, and the town yeah. um, have, uh, have done a marvelous job in a yeah. very short time. It's impressive the work they've done. Yeah. Fortunately, yeah. as the uh, District 5 uh, construction engineer mentioned <coughs> last night, um, the weather was on our side last week. I think we were Mother very Nature. fortunate. <laughs> we were able to work right through the winter. They only lost three days. Um, but what's most impressive about that project to an engineer is the complexity of it. You think, oh, they're going to put up guardrails and, and pave the road. Well, it's a full reconstruction of the causeway right down to the... Believe right me, down I, to the, I did see that. And yeah, it's, uh, and, it's impressive. And there are impressive. massive uh, concrete structures under the road that support the guardrails. Um, the aesthetics, as you mentioned, of those walls, uh, something the town, st certainly the boaters as well, will appreciate. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's a, that's a project that um, shouldn't be confused with the project next door, which is the bridge. Um, you know, people often say, well, how, how's the bridge going? I said, well, it's not going very well because we're working on the causeway. Um, unfortunately, the bridge needs, um, it really needs to be replaced over the long term. Uh, at a minimum, the center pier and the swing span need to be replaced. Um, the DPW works every day to keep a 1935 piece of equipment operating. Yeah. And unfortunately, um, you know, 30 years ago, there were only three or four sailboats on the north side of the bridge. And uh, over time, that bridge has worked more and more instead of less and less as yes. an old piece of equipment uh, should. Um, my concern, and I express it to the select board, on many occasions, I, I remind the Board of Public Works that, um, you know, my biggest concern is someday we get the call that, um, that we don't want to get. Of, we don't want to get the call, but there are uh, there are pieces of equipment. The, the mechanics of that bridge were, were installed in 1935. The big wheels that rolls on the axles. Um, you know, my biggest concern is someday we have a catastrophic failure of, a, of an item we don't have in stock. Right. And we have to stop and have it manufactured. Um, that's a big concern. Um, they do build uh, modern versions of what we have. We've looked at that uh, on a preliminary basis, replacing what is there. But wouldn't uh, a drawbridge, excuse me, but wouldn't a drawbridge really work? Like we, we, we all see when we go to Florida. <clears throat> um, wouldn't that work? Um, it, it would. In the long run, be the best option. Um, if money was not right. uh, an object, it right. would most likely be the best option. Right. Um, we looked at it 10 years ago. We put a request into the Mass DOT to replace the bridge with a drawbridge. Yep. The estimate was $22 million. Yep. Um, they brought me out to a meeting on the bridge and nicely said it's not going to happen. Um, mm -hmm. There are other priorities in the Commonwealth. Um, and we talked about it briefly last night. Um, the funding for a project like the Peyton Aaron Bridge is, is, is you're competing with other regional projects and the state has a very elaborate ranking system where they rank the importance of the bridge based on traffic volumes, mm -hmm. the length of detour, and unfortunately, like the causeway, 
um, the bridge doesn't rank very high in comparison to the other 600 bridges in the district. So, um, in, so the, in the case six, of 600 bridges, roughly 579, I believe. Really? So, um, and again, that's why it took so long for the funding to come into play for the causeway because we started that project in 2000 and we got the funding approval in 2015, 15 years, because it always ranked at the bottom of the list. Um, <clears throat> My recommendation to the Board of Public Works is, um, you know, we'll continue to do whatever we can to keep the bridge operational, but it's time for the town to consider, uh, at a minimum, the, the starting the design for a replacement yeah. of the center pier and the swing span with a modern version of what we have yeah. there. Yeah. So that, that's that the should be a very high priority. It um, should be for, yeah. the, for the town, yep. and uh, um, hopefully we'll bring it before town meeting. Um, yeah. If not this in the fall, but in the spring of next year, exactly. Uh, so we can all, you know, be well aware of yeah. the responsibility that we have before us, financial responsibility. Right. Um, but we do. Uh, you might want to go over the uh, f the process that we've been going through the last couple of weeks uh, with the with some funding uh, for monies that will will help the town uh, at this point do some needed repairs. To, to keep it functional. Sure. So um, that bridge falls under the National Bridge Inspection. So because of the length of the bridge, the Mass DOT inspects it uh, annually and they provide us with the inspection report. Um, the latest report indicated two structural deficiencies on the bridge. If you're a boater, you see them. Um, the center pier is, is, a, is a concrete pier, but it's, it's encased in granite and the granite blocks have lost all their grout um, and to a certain degree their, their structural integrity. Um, the approach piers, that as you approach the bridge from the east and west, there are granite supports on the, each approach pier, uh, pier as well um, that have also been identified as um, structural deficiencies slash in need of immediate repair. So we have been seeking funding to deal with those structural deficiencies. Um, we've been fortunate that uh, the TIP, the Transportation Improvement Plan, had um, a small balance at the end of this fiscal year, a little over $500,000. Uh, we, we were able to work closely with MassDOT and SERPID um, and others at this point to get uh, our project uh, engineered, uh, reviewed by MassDOT, but more importantly, on the TIP so it could be funded. So there have been, yourself included, uh, a bunch of folks working um, with SERPIT and MassDOT to make sure that that small bit of money, it's, it, you know, 500,000 isn't a lot of money in this day and age when you're talking about a bridge repair, but to get that money uh, available to the town so we can move forward and advertise uh, to get these uh, structural deficiencies resolved mm -hmm. uh, next fall. The goal, obviously, is to get this work complete before the causeway opens up. Right. Um, we, you know, we don't want to be in a position where we open the causeway and then close the bridge to do work. Um, most would some of that, excuse me, but would some of that structural work be done uh, with the bridge closed? It, in the in the in, well, I guess in in the closed it, position. It would. Right? So most of the work will be done by barge. Yeah. And so we had a meeting actually last week with Bans DOT about you know the sequence of operation. Mm -hmm. Uh, the worst case scenario, um, they feed the cement to the barge from the up top. Um, so in the event the causeway was open, the worst case scenario is during, you know, the seven to three thirty hours of operation where the contract is working, um, we'd have to shut down one lane and direct yeah. traffic. At so least there'd we, be some traffic that would there flow. There would be some right. slight delays, right. Right. Um, but there would not be a closure. We don't see any closure. Um, so that's something we're working on uh, for the short term. Again, uh, our mechanics at the DPW um, and electricians are, are constantly out at the bridge addressing problems as they arise, doing uh, maintenance, routine maintenance on the bridge. Um, of course, when we get off the bridge, we're in the village, and recently we've started our uh, uh, roadway and sidewalk improvement project there. Um, our goal for that project, we pushed that project along um, because we wanted to get most of the work done in the village while traffic volumes were low because the causeway was closed. Hmm. So the first phase of that work was completed before Memorial Day where we essentially lowered the road 
uh, so that when the new sidewalks go in, they will be ADA compliant. It was a very difficult engineering project. It was done uh, in-house by our DPW engineers. They did a wonderful job, uh, spent a lot of time to get it right, to get that road grade just set uh, to accommodate the new curbing and sidewalks. Mm -hmm. um, so that project is um, uh, over the course of the summer. We are, we are out of the village. Uh, there will be some utility work done by uh, Eversource and uh, Verizon, uh, relocating, replacing old poles, relocating poles to align with the new sidewalk. Um, we have the sidewalk component currently out to bid. We anticipate awarding that project sometime in late July uh, and expect to start the sidewalk part of the project uh, soon after Labor Day. Mm, great. Um, it slows up. And then. try to get that project wrapped up by the end of the, uh, um, you know, the before winter. Uh -huh. It would be that short? Uh, with the right contractor. Yeah, well, Again, yeah, it depends yeah. on the contractor, how many crews he brings in. Uh -huh. um, either way, our goal would be uh, in the spring of 2018, uh, when we resurface the final course of paving on the causeway, Smithnick Road, the causeway, we'll be doing the um, we'll be doing the village at the same time, and and wrap up both those projects uh, by the by June of 2018. So or um, interesting in the village side, Elm Street specifically and Bridge, um, um, with with parking being um, so, you know off street parking is is almost there isn't any yeah. off street parking to speak of. Yeah. Um, I have my views about what we could do. Personally, uh, my views, not the town at this point, but um, you know, I'd like to see the old fire station across from the current fire station on Bridge Street. I'd like to see that demolished, and I would like to see the, the town of Dartmouth build, um, and maybe the DPW could do it on their own, to build a um, off-street parking there. Parking, and I believe the um, engineering is done. I've seen it. And I have it in my files. Yeah. I believe we have some well over 20, 22, 24 spaces. Could be done very nicely to fit in a, in this atmosphere. If it's if the landscaping is done properly, you can yeah. hide mostly everything. Uh, I think we could meter it in the summer. Um, yeah. We could have uh, you know very uh, with the techniques today with lighting. You could have low uh, low volume lighting at the bottom yeah. and not a lot of. Um, visible uh, light standards uh, yeah. to, to take away from, you know, the uh, private uh, uh, residents. And, yeah. and we have to be cautious of that. But that would, uh, that would really, really do an awful lot. Yeah. But I know that's not on, on, our, on our watch yet, <clears throat> but I'm, I'm trying to work on that. Yeah. Uh, and it's sorely needed. I know all the business owners are behind my, yeah. my, uh, my proposal. Um, but uh, on Elm and, um, and Bridge, uh, will we have parking that will be all striped? Will it be parking on both sides of the street? Yep. Um, so maybe we should go over that too. Yeah, so um, when we design Payton Village, we're designing it under these um, standards called complete street standards. Mm -hmm. and, um, <clears throat> and so they recommend a number of features in the design. For example, if you, if you go into even to the, uh, New Bedford, you'll see on Union Street what we call bump outs. So at the intersection there, rather than um, having a, a long crosswalk, the, the, the sidewalk actually comes into the paved area mm -hmm. and, and it, it reduces the, the width or the length of the uh, crosswalk. Um, it also provides better visibility for cars approaching the intersection because cars aren't parked right up to the intersection. Right. You know, in, in today's it traffic, dangerous, yeah. you're supposed to be 20 feet away from a, uh, a, uh, an intersection when you park, but that's not always uh, followed. Um, with that said, when you, for instance, at um, Elm and Bridge, when you, when you build these bump outs, you potentially lose a couple of parking spaces because people aren't parked in that 20 foot zone where they're not supposed to be parked. Um, we have picked up some parking up on Elm on the uh, north side of Bridge up across from, um, you know, in front of the church. Mm -hmm. um, and so we'll pick up a few spots there. We're also picking up spots on Water Street. We're relocating a hydrant that precluded people from parking. So we're, we picked up a couple of spots there. Um, we did lose some spots on Bridge uh, in front of um, uh, the property on the corner of Bridge and Water. Okay, we had to lose those parking spaces to accommodate the new sidewalk. 
Um, but overall, I think there's about a there's a net uh, there's no net change in right, parking, right, right. Um, so parking is still and still will be a problem yes. there. I know a lot of times it overflows into the residential areas. Yeah, it does. Um, and and if you go by, in this day and age, you go to any seaside village uh, that's that's popular even in our state. Yeah. Um, parking is open to everyone. There's no private parking. Um, yeah. And, and you, you see an awful lot of that. And yeah. I think most of the neighbors really uh, realize that it, uh, yeah. it's a short season yeah. and, it, and, it, and it's, a, it, it's a good business plan. It helps the, the shop owners uh, and it, it attracts, attracts the families. Yeah. And that's, uh, that's what we're trying to do. Yeah. Uh, so far, it looks beautiful down there. Yeah. Uh, you've done a great job in a short yeah. period of time. Well, we're looking forward to um, you know, finishing up the sidewalks. The, the material we're using is, is similar to what we used on Elm Street from the police station down mm -hmm. to Prospect. Uh, it's a raised aggregate um, uh, concrete, so you see the stone, and then we enhance that with the brick along the curb, the mm. Boston Yeah, it's uh, very brick. pretty. Yep. And um, we're also adding, we're taking the lights off the top of the pole and we're bringing them down onto pedestal poles uh, in the village. Yep. Um, we're adding trees. Unfortunately, we had to cut down four trees, but we're adding 27 new ones. So yep. um, wherever we could, we've added trees, you know, where, where there were never right, trees right. before on the business side. Right, yeah, it'll look very pretty. Yeah, so done. we're, um, Again, that project is currently out to bid. Um, I just wanted to go over this um, Hathaway <laughs> Road connector, um, and, and um, there is not a there is not a time frame. Am I correct at this point? That's correct. Um, and it's not funded yet either. It's not funded. Um, it was on the tip. It's got moved back into the what they call the future element. Mm -hmm. um, we had. Um, uh, another project that was on the tip as well, uh, Dartmouth Street, the final phase of Dartmouth Street, which is from the Southworth Library down to Middle Street, and then uh, the small section of Prospect Street between Middle and Elm. Um, that area does not have sidewalks, or certainly from Rockland Street uh, down, to, uh, down to Elm. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, that project actually jumped ahead of Tucker Road relocation because of the issues with the land takings and, and, and the cost associated with land takings and business relocation. Hmm. So um, we're, you know, we're pleased in that regard because Dartmouth Street, the engineering's ongoing and we'll be ready to move that one along rather than delaying and, and keeping it behind Tucker yeah. Road. Um, so the new police station, they're, they're moving forward. The bids are, 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 will be coming in shortly. Yep. Um, I'm, I'm looking more, a little further into it in, during the construction part of it. Uh, do you anticipate any, um, any issues for the residents uh, on Tucker Road, it's utilizing Tucker Road with, during the construction? Um, I would think not. I, I, you know, I think that construction will be limited to uh, on site. There are really, uh, the utilities are already on site, mm -hmm. so they, they won't be out into Tucker Road. Um, you know, digging up the water or sewer drain. Everything yeah. is already on right, site. Right. Yeah, I've been asked by numerous people. Yeah. You know, so I thought yeah, I'd I don't foresee, bring that up. I don't foresee that being a yeah. big issue. And that's great. Yeah. Uh, and I, I'm sure that's an issue for some. Um, I think we talked about this um, a while ago, Hawthorne Street. Um, mm -hmm. What's going on there? Okay, so Hawthorne Street is another project. Well, let me just step back. Oh, okay. Um, last... Uh, um, Last spring, this past spring, several months ago, we completed our, our complete street priority list. So we've listed uh, our 15 top priorities <coughs> as far as transportation, local transportation projects. Um, and uh, Hawthorne Street's right up at the top of that list. I believe it's number three. Um, Payton Air Village, obviously, number one. We have a grant application in for $400,000 uh, through the complete street uh, program. Um, the next street is Milton Street. Uh, we've upgraded all the utilities there. We're ready to t tackle that. Uh, our water bid will be out in the next month, mm -hmm. upgrading the water mains, and then next spring we'd like to start construction on Milton Street, new sidewalks, pavement. Mm -hmm. Hawthorne Street is, th is the next one. Um, the town had applied for a grant to study uh, the drainage issues da associated with the uh, culvert right down uh, next to the synagogue. Right. Uh, over the years, that culvert in big storms has flooded. Uh, the roads had to be shut down. 
Um, obviously, if we're going to build a new road, we want to resolve that issue. Um, and it's, a, it's not a simple issue. Uh, you know, people say, well, why don't you make the culvert bigger? Well, if we made the culvert bigger, then the next one over at Allen Street Something would flood will suffer. And, and so, so <laughs> exactly. would Sharp. So there's more to it right, than that. Right. And it really requires a lot of study. Um, in most cases, some type of mitigation, upgrading of the culvert. Uh, so we don't impact people down gradient. So uh, the town has um, anticipated uh, uh, an award for that work by uh, FEMA and MEMA um, through a grant that we applied for. And as soon as we get that resolved and, and that culvert uh, upgraded, mm -hmm. um, um, we'll move forward with the rest of uh, 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 Hawthorne Street. What we envision there is sidewalks on both sides We'll be adding sidewalks to the south side. Um, and then same thing, it will follow the complete street standards, most likely have bump outs for the parking that takes place along the north side. Mm -hmm. uh, and just make it a safer uh, road. Uh, try to, it's a wide road. We yes. hope to, you know, slow heavily that tra down. Heavily traveled. By, by, it's heavily traveled, but sometimes, um, not sometimes, but by narrowing the road, you, you uh, instinctively slow down speed. So that's one of the things we'll be looking at on that design. It's a great idea. Yeah. Narrowing roads slow down, yeah, especially it in works. busy, busy areas yeah. where a lot of people like to yeah. walk and yeah. um, it becomes quite dangerous. We've, um, in the past three years, we've, um, we have been, folks probably don't realize it, but we have been narrowing our lane widths down. They were, they were around 12 feet, now we have them down to 10 and a half feet. Um, and does is two there, things. There's a state minimum, I, I, I would it's, presume. That's the, uh, that's the recommended minimum, actually, uh, yeah. at this point. And what that does is it, it provides additional um, space for bicycles on a shared road, mm -hmm. uh, but it instinctively slows traffic sure. down by having the narrow lane. And uh, do we, uh, will we be marking all these new roads, and uh, will we have uh, bike path uh, mark, uh, identifications? So part of the Complete Street Program yep. is uh, uh, the definition of a complete street is not just for cars, but it's for bikes, it's for pedestrians. pedestrians, for ADA. It's for everyone that uses yeah. you know, the roadway. Yeah. Um, so whenever possible, we add in a bike lane. Um, if not, we add in a shared lane. And mm -hmm. so that's really... Yeah, uh, I see a lot of that in Fall River. Yeah. Uh, where they're sharing it. You know? Yeah. So they have both decals. You know? Exactly. Yeah, right, yep. right, right. And, yep. and signage. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, so one other thing... Uh, not to belabor this, pro this question, but I know a lot of people are very interested in roads and bridges. They love them, yep. as you always tell me. Um, so are there any projects that, that you would personally like to bring forward that we haven't, that we haven't forgot, that have been forgotten? Um, I think we've done a good job in getting all our north-south roads in really good shape. And, um, you know, we're... Uh, in fact, we, uh, we're wrapping up our final meeting for our pavement management plan that I will present to the select board soon. Um, and in that, you'll see that overall, our primary road system in Dartmouth's in, in, in very good condition. And once Fonz Connor Road, uh, the phase they're working on now is updated, um, you, you'll see that most of our primary roads are in pretty good shape. Hathaway Road needs some work. Does. Um, we are scheduling uh, a phase of it. We do a project like that in, in multiple phases. So we're looking at one phase of that this year. We're looking at that uh, section of Slocum Road between uh, State Road and Hathaway, up updating that as well. Um, but I think the real, I won't say problem, but it, it, it's something the town will need to address are these old residential areas of town. Um, for example, Bliss Corner. Um, if, you, if you travel through Bliss Corner, Dartmouth Street looks great. Cove Road's in pretty good shape. Uh, Rogers Street, we have the engineering ready to go as soon as we can find the money. But the residential areas are in desperate need of full reconstruction. They're beyond any type of maintenance. We can't go in and crack seal, chip seal. Right. They need to be fully reconstructed, and it's not, uh, it's not cheap. And that means taking everything up. Taking everything up. In many cases, we may be able to uh, um, uh, narrow the road because back in the old days, they made the roads really wide. Um, we'll look at that. But um, there are just a number of areas in town where um, we need to start allocating money. And the, the, the money that the town has available uh, for road maintenance now, 
uh, has been geared to keeping good roads good. Um, that's been our, our motto and our, you know, what we plan to do. We get a road in good shape, we want to spend the money to keep it that way because for every dollar you spend maintaining and preserving a road, you save six dollars down the road in reconstructing it. Um, and again, I think we're in pretty good shape as far as that goes, but we really need to address these. And, and I hear it all the time. Yeah. About, I've mentioned to you, I send yeah. you texts, yeah. emails about residents notifying me about residential, as you're talking about residential yeah. roads uh, that are in very, very poor shape. Uh, yeah. Um, and uh, it, that's, a yeah. that's going to be a challenge. Yeah. Uh, identifying uh, the, 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 the priorities. Yeah. Uh, which who's going to be on the top of the list? Exactly. And uh, the, and a lot of them seem to be uh, at, at the lowest level. So it's, yeah. it, will be, it will be a challenge building yeah. that list. Yeah, that's for Up sure. Up north, we have um, you know we have Flag Swamp Road that recently the town acquired. Mm -hmm. uh, the legislature approved us accepting Flag Swamp Road, Lucy Little Road, and Woodcock Road yeah. that we found out were never accepted by the town. Um, so. Flag Swamp Road is one of the, our priorities up north. Uh, Lucy Little, we're uh, awaiting, we're doing a study now to see what we need to. was just on that road this morning. Yeah, um, we, we get quite a few complaints about Lucy Little Road. Um, we have, um, uh, as you know, we have a water supply on each end. We're studying, we're doing a hydraulic model now to make a decision on whether we're going to loop um, Chase Road to Old Westport Road via Lucy Little. Mm -hmm. We have water mains in this part that was upgraded. Uh, but it would be from that section where the pavement changes down. Mm. Uh, once we make the decision whether we go for the water main or not, uh, we plan to redo Lucy Little Road. Um, Smith Neck Road's a road that's, again, that would be a multi-phased project for us. A lot of it needs, um, at a minimum, cold planing and repaving. Um, we, uh, we have a meeting this week where uh, we had delayed doing Rockadunde, the final phase of Rockadunde, between Smith Neck Road and Bakerville Road. We did the remaining section in two phases. Um, we're looking at a technology out there called uh, in-place cold recycling, where we take the mix up, uh, they process it, they add emulsion, cement to it, and they put it right back down really? as in that's, one pass. That's incredible. It's incredible. Out of the same machine? Same machine. It's a train, and as you go, you put in the binder. And uh, the binder, in, in that case, we're looking at about a four and a half, a five inch uh, binder, and then we'll put some type of uh, pavement uh, preservative over it, whether it be mm -hmm. a micro or a thin overlay. Um, that's a project we most likely will do this year because Smithnick Road is open. Yep. Uh, we've slowed down some of the traffic volume out there. Um, and again, I think we could do that project in two days. Really? Uh, yeah. And that, uh, that brings me to this, um other subject, and I, I, I don't believe the DBW is involved in it at this point, but um, there's awful lot of talk about the Harbor Walk, um, and uh, not only uh, in the village side, but on the other side sure. of the bridge, um, and mainly Smithneck uh, from from the, the bridge to yep. to um, trying to think of the name of the street. Baby. Yep, right, Baby. Baby. Um, and um, so that's that's a bit of a controversial. Uh, it's, I think mostly, I think it's a concept at this point. I don't believe it's fully vetted as a project. Um, and, and, and I understand the, the importance of it all and, and that the state is behind most of this. And, and thankfully, and I'm sure there's, there'll be money involved with yeah. it. But at this point, I don't believe because it, uh, it is only a concept. And mm -hmm. there's lots and lots of alternative yeah. uh, opportunities for both sides. So you have, you have yep. residents on one side, and you have, you know, the uh, uh, the Harbor Walk uh, uh, group on the other, yep. and they both have, you know, um, I guess they'll all have to meet in the middle somehow, yep. and 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 find a way to make it make both things happen. Yeah. And I think I think the concept is a great idea. I yep. truly do. I know yep. there's a lot of biking. A lot of people like to walk. It's a beautiful part of this town yeah. that that everybody should be able to share, and there's no yep. question. But. There are other, you know, issues where we have to protect residents also and in, in yeah. their investments in their property. Yeah. So um, that will be interesting. So I don't know if you have any views yeah, or, um, about that. Again, the DPW at this point is not um, involved in it. Certainly the, the, the component in the village where they're looking at, you know, through the private property. Mm. Um, <clears throat> Smith Neck Road, I, I will say over the years, people who lived in Bayview have, have called me and asked, you know, when are you going to build a sidewalk so we can get 
to the village safely. Yeah. Um, um, it's it seems like a straightforward project. There'd be, I think, quite a bit of environmental permitting uh, through the section from where we're ending. We're running a new sidewalk from uh, from the causeway 550 feet up Smith Neck Road. From that point to, um, geez, the next seven, 800 feet um, is through a coastal, uh, uh, it's considered dune. Uh, I'm not sure how we would deal with that. Um, but DPW would come into play if, if the money arrives. Right. If, if someone right. comes up with the money, we'll, we'll engineer it, permit it, and, and build it. Um, you know, obviously, aesthetics out there would be a big concern of us making sure it fits into the neighborhood. And, yeah, Something I took that some we pictures last of. night of you know that finished pro uh, sidewalk yeah. uh, on uh, 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 that uh, that you've you've done there, and it's beautiful. I, I posted it on my Facebook page, oh, okay. so if anybody wants to take a peek at it, but I encourage people to drive down there and look yeah. at it. It's uh, it's just yeah. wonderful. Yeah, really great job. Yeah, it'll be nice when the uh, the lighting is up. Yeah, There's uh, sure. nice lighting going on the causeway and Spintec Road as yeah. well, yeah. Uh, and then of course the landscaping is the uh, the final component. Oh, sure. Yeah. Oh. So I, I just want to, um, for those of you that have have not uh, noticed uh, uh, in the papers the last few days, uh, we had a wonderful celebration uh, a week or so ago at uh, at the new garage, uh, the Manny Branco garage. And I want to, again, publicly congratulate Mr. Branco, yeah. yourself also, uh, uh, with the job so well done. That building is we might want to just overview a little bit about what's going sure. on there. All, all the latest equipment, and yep. uh, um, it's. We should be very, very proud of our DPW. Yeah. Um, well, first of all, I, I, at the dedication of the Manuel A. Branco uh, Fleet Maintenance Facility, um, you know, I, I thanked a number of people, and you know, again, I, uh, on behalf of the DPW, we're ecstatic that the town uh, recognized the need for a proper facility for an operation as big as we have down there mm. and um, and then more importantly to be able to protect the equipment um, that's very expensive and and so two things have occurred in, in the recent years one is um, the town's been able to provide the DPW with the equipment necessary to do a good job um, and now this uh, facility allows us to protect that equipment um, just briefly uh, you know, as you mentioned, we, we expanded our maintenance facility. Um, we added uh, new uh, warm storage bays, a truck wash. That's a big part of what we do. All our equipment's washed every day, particularly after sanding operations in the winter. Uh, to be able to do that inside now is, is really uh, important. Um, preventive we, maintenance. It's all part of our preventive maintenance program. Uh, we also uh, in, uh, were able to create office space for our, uh, our foreman and supervisors, uh, locker rooms. We have 44 uh, employees at that site and we didn't even have locker rooms and to have uh, adequate lockers and bathrooms. Um, our training would occur in the, in the garage. We would pull chairs out and sit amongst the trucks. There's a lot of training people don't um, realize in, in DPW. Uh, there are a number of licenses regardless, regardless of what type of work you're doing. So we have a nice training facility um, and um, then two of the other things that we built was a, one was a 100 by 140 uh, cold storage equipment facility. Uh, we utilized um, sprung buildings that were donated by the military, uh, the uh, big aluminum frames that were worth a fortune, uh, and then we reskinned them. We also built a new salt shed, it doubled our capacity for a town this big. We were always running out of salt because we didn't have adequate capacity right. to you have store to, it under cover. shield it. And we have it. We have that ability now. So, um, yeah. So overall, um, um, we inc we upgraded the uh, fuel tanks, um, and then today, if you go by, we're we're starting to uh, redo the uh, the paving. We're, we're yeah. taking all the paving, creating all the new grading. We'll stripe it. Um, but it's um, and I mentioned at the dedication, I've been to a number of uh, really nice DPW facilities. Um, high-end DPW facilities. Mm -hmm. I won't mention the towns, but they're up in west of Boston. Um, our facility is very nice. Our guys appreciate it, but it's a very functional facility. It, uh, there aren't a lot of bells and whistles. It's all about function, yep. um, but at the same time providing you know 
locker rooms and bathrooms sure. and showers uh, for the guys who uh, you know sometimes work long hours. And, well, they and, they, know, and they so deserve on. it. Yeah. So we're very appreciative yeah. of the town, um, select board, finance committee, everyone that supported that project. Yeah, we and, were wise in our allocations each year at town meeting. You were to and that I, together. And I, I, it took quite a few years. It didn't happen overnight. It didn't, and I thought that was a great way to finance a project like that. It occurred over three years uh, at every town meeting. Uh, the town put a little money aside. I understand they're doing the same thing now with the library. Yep. Um, yeah. Well, it worked out well. Concept works. Yeah, it was it a great really concept works. because, uh, geez, you look back and uh, three years later, you, you have the money for the project there. Sure. Um, so, yeah, I thanked uh, uh, Dave Crestman and Greg Barnes for coming up with that yeah. that concept, and yeah. it worked out very well it for this did. project. And, you know, it, yeah. and, and town meeting was... was uh, thoughtful enough to vote for it Absolutely. and uh, with very little resistance. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, <clears throat> so Mr. In closing, it, oh. it, and I mentioned Sorry. before, um, you know, there's no other person but Manny Branco oh, uh, that yeah. should have his name on that he building. Does. He's, He's, he does. He gave his heart and soul to the, to the DPW for, uh, you know, for 40 plus years. And his name's all over town. With it's any all, kind of project you see that's happened in the, in the past. Yeah. And some of the things that are even planned now, yeah. his name's on it it's somehow. An, it's on it, yeah. Yeah, yeah and it's, yeah, it's so really wonderful. Well deserving. We're very, very, very lucky to have had someone like him and yourself yeah. again. Yeah. But Mr. Hickok, so what's in your future? I'm be at work tomorrow morning. You know? <laughs> that's, that's what it's all about. It, you know, it comes to work. I'm, uh, I, you know, I enjoy what I do. People ask me, oh, when are you retiring? I said, but I actually enjoy what I do. I think you enjoy what you're doing. I do too. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, um, so that's a big part of it, you know, and as long as I'm enthused about it, then I'll, I'll continue to work. And unfortunately, I have a great staff, um, a lot of enthusiasm, and um, we just like to, we like to build things. We like to put projects out and get things done. That's what that's engineers what, do, right? Yes, yeah, <laughs> and we have a, a great engineering crew and, uh, you know, support staff. and um, Jimmy Barber and his crew. Tim and, and, and Paul. I mean, Timmy Barber, and, I'm sorry. And, yeah, we have just a lot of good guys uh, and girls. Father, right? Uh, yeah, <laughs> and um, so, yeah, we're fortunate. We're able to, uh, you know, if the money's there, we're able to get the jobs done. Yeah. And, um, you know, that uh, highway project was a project we did in-house. You know, we didn't hire yeah. engineers or architects. That was all, everything was bid, uh, all designed, everything was done in-house. So, That's great. Yeah, um, and uh, it, was a, it was a lot of work for the staff. But well, uh, I want to thank you very, very much for this this uh, wonderful time you've given uh, myself, my program, and the town. And okay. uh, now that I know you're going to still be around for a while, keep right. up the good work. Uh, give me a call. Yes. Well, this concludes another episode of Your Town. Uh, to keep, keep our town residents informed and up to date, this is Stanley Mickelson signing off once more. Thank you. <laughs>